So you may know I'm a big support of all things emulation. And in today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at the advancements in emulation for the PlayStation 3 by the way of RPCS3 on the PC. Now, RPCS3, for those people that don't know, is a PlayStation 3 emulator that does a pretty fine job supporting most, but not all, certainly not all, PlayStation 3 games. And in the last six months or so, there's been some incredible advancements, and it's really something that I want to talk about on the channel today. RPCS3 is a PlayStation 3 emulator that runs under Windows. There is also a Linux version that you can try, as well as a Mac version that's currently in development. When it comes to emulation, attempting to emulate a PS3 properly stands at the top of the mountain as the single most complex thing that you could possibly do. I've covered the complexity of the PS3 hardware in terms of making games for it, as well as emulating one in past episodes. And if you're interested, I'll leave links to those in the description below. Now over on the RPCS3 website, you can simply just download the latest version of the emulator. And as you can see, you have options for both Windows and Linux. And as mentioned, Mac is on the way, but it's currently not available, but Mac will come out at some point. So check that out if you are interested. But all you need to do at this point is download either a Windows build. And uh, if you do that, it'll just download it onto your desktop here and then just extract that into a folder. And then all you need to do at that point is run the RPCS3 executable. Now, once you've downloaded and extracted RPCS3, the first time you run it, you need to install a firmware. So the PlayStation 3 firmware itself is composed of many different libraries that do many different things. And all these games that run on PlayStation 3 reference these libraries. Now, the way that it works is you simply install the PlayStation 3 firmware via RPCS3, and it probably takes about a minute or so once that's done. And once you're done at that point, you're all pretty much set to go. Now, I will mention that you do need a pretty solid and beefy piece of hardware to run RPCS3. Now, if we take a look at the quick start guide, you can see that the minimum requirements here is basically any x64 CPU or any x64 Intel CPU and anything that runs OpenGL 4.3 or higher with four gigabytes of RAM. Now, I will tell you that nothing is really going to run very well with those specifications. You might get away with some of the smaller releases that are out there that don't take advantage of the SPUs and maybe some homebrew stuff, but ultimately you're not really going to get a great experience. Now, the website recommends a six core 12 thread or eight cores or more Skylake architecture or newer. I would even argue that even Skylake isn't necessarily going to give you a great experience. On my PC here, I'm running a 10th generation Intel i7 and I will say that it runs things pretty well for the most part, but there are still some games that have slowdown issues. Now in the past, to test the emulation, you would need to install a game first to see if things were running properly. But that is no longer the case because the firmware file also contains the virtual shell or cross media bar dashboard. And with a recent update on January the 3rd of 2022, it is now possible to boot into the VSH and run the cross media bar UI with any PlayStation 3 firmware. And this is a significant update for many reasons. Most emulators out there don't really seem to bother with the user interface. They're more really focused on playing games. But this is a significant update to RPCS3. We're slowly starting to see the fruits of the work that's being done over the years and the compatibility level is only increasing over time. I should also mention that the RPCS3 devs are working on fixing the missing audio and implementing the web browser in the XMB. And there are also other things that are being worked on. To launch into the cross media bar, simply select boot VSH slash XMB from the file menu. Now, the first time that you run anything in RPCS3, it's going to take a little bit of time to compile up all the PPU and SPU caches. But this is a one and done type of deal. Once everything has been cached, booting into the XMB the second time round will be much faster.
Now, one of the other things that I really like to do before I get stuck into RPC 3 is configure my gamepad. Now, if we go into the pads menu here, I have a DualShock 4 plugged into my PC, and I can simply just select it from the drop down here. It has kind of presets here. If you're plugging in a DualShock 3 or a DualShock 4, it even has a preset for the DualSense as well. And if you have just a generic like X input based stick or perhaps a Xbox 360 stick that you want to use, that will be supported as well. But I definitely recommend that you use a gamepad on RPCS3. You can get away with the keyboard, of course, but I would probably recommend that you don't do that. But once you've got your pad all configured as well, then really now the next thing to do is start playing some games. So if we take a closer look at the compatibility list, there's been some significant advancements here as well. You can see that there's 3,250 games that are on the database. And of those, there's 2,069 which is a percentage of 63.66%. And the definition of playable here are games that can be completed with playable performance and no game breaking glitches. And that is a pretty high percentage. The last time we looked at this, it was in the high 50s. As of the making of this episode, the compatibility list is almost at 60% of the entire PS3 library as playable with a further 33.5% as getting in game. Another major milestone is that back in October of 2021, the RPCS3 team announced that every single PS3 game now boots into the emulation. In other words, there is 0% in the nothing column. The team has also been very busy fixing graphical issues over the past few months and overall improving the emulation accuracy. Notably, issues addressed with the media mode rendering that addresses many graphical issues that were found in games such as Ratchet & Clank, Uncharted 1, 2 and & 3, and The Last of Us. And now, there's also recent updates to fix lighting issues as well as things like dynamic shadows. I've spent the past few days testing the updates out for myself, and i got to say I'm impressed with how well things have quickly progressed along. The team really seems to have hit their stride, and while there's still lots of work to do, well, just take a look for yourself. Blast it! What am I doing wrong? Am I not powerful enough? Away, their magic will fail. One of the more interesting additions to RPCS3 is the replacement for PSN on the emulator which is known as RPCN, and this allows for netplay functionality of many games. Like the emulator itself, this is still very much a work in progress, and there is a compatibility list that you can look at yourself. But according to some of the tweets from the fighting game community, games like Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online editions and others are working fine. Now, when I tried Virtual Fighter 2, with two computers running RPCS3 locally, I was able to connect to each other and see each other but I would often get kicked out while playing matches. So yeah, while there's quite a bit of work to be done here, the prospect of playing or replaying older PS3 games online is quite exciting. So as you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of RPCS3 and I'm very excited about the future of this emulator. And I think over the next 12 to 18 months, we're really going to see some more improvements occur to that compatibility list. Maybe we'll see it start to push around the 70% mark. And I think this year will be a massive year for the team and I expect big things from them. Now, having said that, if you wanna get behind PlayStation 3 emulation, because let's be honest, there's probably very little chance that Sony is ever going to give us a native PlayStation 3 backward compatibility layer on the PS5 then the best thing that you could probably do is to get on their Patreon. Now, I want to be very clear, I'm not sponsored or affiliated by RPCS3. I was not asked to make this video or anything like that. I am just a big fan 
of the software and I want to see it continue to grow because this is a really great piece of work that they've already developed and it's only going to continue to get better and with your support it really does make a huge difference so i'll leave a link to the rpcs3 website and there is a patreon link if you want to jump on and help them out but i think they would really appreciate it but we are going to continue to follow this emulator over the course of the year and when there's any significant enhancements and updates to talk about i'll definitely circle back and make a follow-up for it in the future but if you haven't already, check out RPCS3. You'll definitely not be disappointed. And a huge thanks to the team for creating this impressive, impressive piece of technology. And it's something that I've been really messing around with over the last couple of weeks. But that will do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to put a like on it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.